Welcome to Prep Your Data. We're a startup company aimed at helping you clean up messy data yourself. Obviously, we would prefer you to use our tools, but we also want you to be successful and efficient using Excel itself. This video shows the best Excel techniques we know for unpivoting cross-tab data into a simple list to make the data more compatible with Excel pivot tables and charting. We also have a video showing how the same problem can be addressed using Prep Your Data software. Today I'm working with some data on CO2 emissions that I got from a public website. It has the form of a cross tab with one row per country and one column for each year. That's fine if I just want to read it, but if I want to do more processing, especially using charts and pivot tables, there's a problem. Each of the columns for the years comes out as a separate data value and it's hard to get the charts to show trends. Before I can get meaningful charts, I need to unpivot the cross tab so that the data looks like this, with one year and one row per value, and of course, many more rows. So let's see how we can solve that in Excel. One thing I need to do is know how many of these columns there are that I'm going to one pivot. I've got from 2000 to 2010, so that's 11 in total, and I'm going to need to remember that for one of the later steps. My first step, I'm going to set up the headers, so I'm going to copy these two columns and I'm going to create a new sheet paste those back in now I'm going to create a split because I'm going to want to be able to see the top and the bottom at once now I need a lot more rows I need 11 copies of all of these headers. So what I'm going to do is scroll down to the bottom. Okay, so my last row is 253. I'm going to need to know the number of data rows as well. Uh, so what I've got is 253 minus 1, 252 data rows, and I'm going to have 11 copies of those. So that's 2772. I will need two, 2772 rows of this data. I'm going to set this one equal to A2, which copies down the first value. Fill that across. And if I start filling that down, you can see that what it's doing, of course, is copying all of the row headers down. Now I need to carry on that operation down to row 2772. So I'm going to select those two and start scrolling down. Okay, I've got to the bottom. I'm going to do a shift click here, control D to fill down, and it's filled down all of those, copying the values from the top. So I now have 11 copies of all of my country names and country codes. Okay, next I can start working on the years column. So the first of my years was 2000. I'm using this quote because some of the functions I'm going to use work better with strings than numbers. And we use a similar trick to fill down with this. I'm going to make that C2. And fill that down. So now I've got all of the values in that column equal to 2000. Which isn't exactly what I want, but it's a start. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a table so that I can easily filter on it. And what I can do, I'm going to filter on ABW, which is Aruba. So this is just the first row in each of the sets. So I can change this one to 2001. So now I've set each of these as the, the top value in each uh, set of countries to the, the right number. And if I change the, turn the filtering off, and scroll down you can see that it's filled in all of the intermediate ones as well so I've now got my years column as I need it go back to the top so now I need to create my values column and of course this is where the uh, magic comes in going back to my data I'm going to select all of this area 
and give it a name. So now I can refer to this area in functions as my table. And I'm going to add this function using hlookup. So this hlookup uses the table on the previous column, takes the value in C2, which is 2000, takes the row number, which is row 2, and uses 2000 is in the vertical, row 2 in the horizontal as the coordinates, and pulls the value out of my table. So that's pulled down all of the values from 2000 from the table of data. But if I look right down at the bottom, it hasn't fully worked. And in fact, if I check, it'll have worked for the first set of rows down to about 270. And then after that, everything's zero. And of course, the problem is that it's using the row number to index in. And there is nothing in my table beyond row 253. So I need to do something to get the right row number. And I'm going to add another column call match and go back over here say the country name color column and give that a name my countries now I can come back over here and paste in this function and this function takes value in a3 in A2 in this case, uh, indexes that into my countries and essentially returns the row number that matches this country name. And of course that works all the way down, even down here in column row 2696. It's looking up New Zealand in the table on the other sheet and coming up with a row 176. So now if I go back here and I change this reference to row number to E2, instead all the numbers come across all the way down now you may find you need to fill down these formulas uh, directly in this version of excel because i'm using a table at this point it automatically fills down whenever i put something in the top column so i think we're pretty much there i can hide this column and if i just scroll down to the bottom and look at the very last cell 2010 Zimbabwe 0 0.072. Go back over here. Two thousand and ten last column Zimbabwe 0 0.072. So now but using a combination of the match function, the H lookup function, and some copying and pasting, I have managed to do the unpivot by hand. But it was certainly easier using prep your data. That was quicker and less error prone than working through the data row by row, but still not as easy as using Prep Your Data. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to watch our other videos showing useful Excel techniques and our product in action.